Oracle. What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. In today's video, I'm gonna go over why most resellers will never sell 10 items a day or can't sell 10 items a day or don't sell 10 items a day. Um, and it's not what you think. Okay, a lot of people think that I'm always clowning on everything sellers or I'm saying that people don't want it bad enough. That's not true. Um, you can do this if you're an everything seller. Uh, I would say that it doesn't start getting really, really difficult as an everything seller until like 50 items a day. So you could sell 30 random items every single day without any issues, not because you don't want it either. That's like some Gary V garbage that's not related here. It's not about like you don't want it bad enough. A lot of people want this. Everyone listening to this channel wants to do a good job. Um, I think there's three reasons why they're not. So we're gonna get into this video. Um, make sure you watch all the way to the end too because at the end of the video, I'm gonna go over um, all my best free resources for you guys. So those of you that don't want to spend any money, you can watch all the way to the end of the video and I'll tell you how to get all my resources for free. Uh, or if you want to pay for my resources, you can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash the resource podcast. And in that group, we have thousands of hours of coaching and 15 coaches to help you be successful. But if you want it for free, you can watch all the way to the end. Um, it's also a live Q&A so you guys can ask your questions. Um, number one, we'll just get straight into it. Hopefully there's people in here and you guys can hear me okay. Um, the number one thing is that people lack time management skills, like big time. People have no schedule. Uh, they really don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. They don't know what's going to happen today. And the hours just slip away. If you don't have a plan, um, you will not get a lot done. And no one accidentally sells 10 items a day. You can't slip or trip and all of a sudden you have 10 sales. You have to really know what you're doing. Um, also, it's not about listing more. Um, if you can't list 10, you definitely won't sell 10, but it's not about You have to actually understand how eBay works, how these algorithms work, what to buy, what to sell. And if you're not constantly looking, it's, it's a moving target. People's interests change. People, things come in and out of style. And um, this weekend, I'm going to go over number one a little bit more. Um, we host people at my place, um, family, friends. So um, I was still able to basically reset the house to zero, which is like take all the garbage out, um, do dishes for 19 people, organize everything. I had time to go get flowers for the apartment or for the house. Like all those things on top of my regular schedule, I was still able to get it done because time management is just planning what your day is going to look like and then executing it. But most people don't have time management. So this is the second thing that is really the, this is huge too, is people are not consistent. But the reason they're not consistent is they have a million distractions that happen every single day, and they don't have a way to deal with those distractions, and they don't have a way to plan. Um, those of you that are in the morning call have noticed that I've been early to the calls. Most of the calls in the morning, now I am now early. Um, I've been attending, right, hosting and attending these calls since 2017. 
Um, and most of the time I show up right around when they, when they start. But recently I've been a little bit more early. And the way I came to that conclusion is there's actually a mom in the group that showed me her schedule. And in between every one of her things, she has half an hour of buffer time. Um, I've actually never done that. I don't have buffer time. All of my stuff is basically back to back to back to back all day. And it makes it very difficult to actually get ahead because you need a little buffer time in case something takes longer than you, you would think. And if something finishes earlier than you think, you need to get right into the next one in case it takes longer. So I learned from that buffering that that mom showed me that you need to have a little bit more buffer built in. And you probably can only do two or three two or three less things per day to get to that next level. But um, not being consistent is mainly just removing distractions. There's so many distractions. And I would guess, this is just from me listening to all the YouTuber comments, watching other resale channels. From what I can see, we all have the same job, right? We sell used stuff. I'm going to call us a, a used good technician. Or some people say we're trash elves, right? So whatever you call us, um, most people are doing about 15 minutes of work in an entire day. So let's say you sleep for eight hours a day. I think that might be too much for a lot of people, but some people need eight hours. You have 16 hours while you're awake. Most resellers are only working 15 minutes of that time. Every time you get distracted, you lose like 20 minutes. This is when like you pick up your phone, you use the bathroom, you go have lunch, <clears throat> a friend calls, your mom calls, your sister calls, your boyfriend calls, your ex calls, whatever. This is happening to you on average three times in an hour and you lose 20 minutes each time. So essentially over the course of an hour, you didn't do any work. So most resellers are repeating that cycle 15 out of the 16 hours. And for some reason, maybe their phone ran out of battery or um, Instagram got boring and they already finished the feed or something. They have a small window where they don't have anything to do and they get their one or two listings up that are actually going to sell during that time. You might list a bunch of items that will never sell. That's the same as listing nothing in my opinion. It's just the same as procrastination. You have to really understand what's going to sell, what it's going to sell for and put the effort in. But not being consistent is mainly because people are so distracted. If you came here and worked here, you would do more work than you do in the whole week in the first couple of hours. I was looking at a lady in the morning schedule. I do more before noon than she does the entire month. If you count like productive hours of what we are actually doing, she's so distracted by social media, her friends, her family, multiple pets, multiple kids, multi a dozen different side hustle projects at the same time that she doesn't get anything done. She's also cross-listing on three different platforms. So it's like, on average, she's doing $2,000 a month reselling, which is a, a great start, but that you shouldn't be only doing $2,000 gross if you're full-time. You should be making, that should be per day. So if you just condense everything into one session, you're really going to kill it. And then the third thing, um, this is the hardest part, and this is why most resellers won't make it or can't make it. They don't understand how eBay works because they don't understand when sales are slow. Let me know in the comment section below if you don't understand why your sales are slow. That's never occurred to me. I know why my sales are slow. So if you don't know why and you don't spend time learning that, you'll never be able to be successful at reselling. You have to know why. Um, in the morning group, um, we're now saying instead of store reviews, give us a listing that you want us to give you feedback on. What's wrong with your title? What's wrong with your, your photos, your item specifics, pricing, return policy, shipping policy, category? Put one listing up and let us look at it. And what we're, we're finding is that people put up listings, titles wrong, photos are, are wrong or lit poorly, item specifics are incorrect, um, description's incorrect, <clears throat> price is way too high, shipping is way too slow, um, handling time is way too long, answer questions way too long, take too long to answer uh, best offers, poor selection of items in their store. Like literally everything is wrong. So if you look at it, right, and you look at, try to isolate all these different things, you'll understand what bounce rate is. Do, you, do people in the chat know what bounce rate is? Let me know um, on a scale of one to 10, how much do you understand eBay bounce rate? If somebody shows up to your listing and they leave, that's a bounce, right? So if, if you have one or two mistakes in your listing, 
and people start leaving, right? eBay knows that because they track the algorithm and how the page moves. So they'll see customers are going to your listing and then leaving immediately. If that happens, they're going to stop serving your listings to people because there's something wrong with it, right? So if you are the opposite, right, and people go through all through the listing and then they convert into buying it, that's, not a, that's a conversion. There's a bounce rate where people leave and conversion where people buy. If you are a seller that's converting, eBay gives all the traffic to those sellers. And if you're a seller that bounces, they stop giving you traffic even if you put good items in your store. Hopefully this makes sense, guys. But this is why it looks like, to me, from the outside, people are either killing it or people are making no money. So either like less than $5 an hour. When I worked it out for that lady in the morning, $2,000 gross. When we back it all up, she's making $3.14 an hour. And... The only reason she's making $3.14 an hour is because she's only listing items from her death pile. If she went out thrifting, she would be negative. It's only because she's selling stuff that she already has that she's even earning $3 per hour. So it's really important, guys. Um, I'm going to hopefully take a bunch of questions from you guys, but people really don't have time management. They're not consistent because they're so distracted, and they're not focused on learning how eBay works. Those are the three reasons why most sellers will never make it. If you are good at these three things, you will make a ton of money. So it's really, really important. Uh, good morning, Chad. We got our first question of the yep. day, too, from Elio. Uh, what up, Chris? Do you think fourth quarter is different from all, from all years before? Maybe the economy is messing up the norm. Uh, I think people still want to buy things. It's the same as every single Q4. I think there's less spending power. Um, groceries are really expensive. Eating out's really expensive. I would say that um, hosting two parties costs me two hundred and twenty dollars. So like, it's difficult to pay two hundred and twenty dollars and then also go online and buy things extra. I don't think there's extra extra money this week or this. Um, there's not extra money this year. To give you an example, uh, how many days before Black Friday is it? Like five. Um, I think. So, okay, days. it's like four days before Black Friday. I just got a text from Polo Ralph Lauren at every single thing in their store is 50% off. It's five days early. Like, people don't have money. This is going to be the craziest discount season ever for new goods. So, definitely, it's going to affect used goods because if I can buy a, a Ralph Lauren sweater for 65% off, then I don't want to buy a used one for 65% off. I can get the same thing from the actual store. So I can gift it. Um, and right now, it's interesting because I have, if you guys have been watching my whatnot, um, you can use my code to get $15 off your first purchase. I'm selling more new goods than I am pre on now. And I'm not joking. Some of the new goods are cheaper than the thrift store. Like, I'm not, like, brand new items are cheaper than Goodwill. Goodwill prices are inflating. And I think that Goodwill prices will continue to inflate because they're getting it. You guys, you guys think that Goodwill is, um, you're never going to sell it. They do sometimes. That's why they're pricing their items so high because people are not going to the mall. They're going to Goodwill to buy a cheap jacket for $20. It used to be $7 at Goodwill, but now it's 20 at Goodwill. That same jacket, brand new, might be in a wholesale pallet for 18 16 for a brand new jacket. So it's real interesting right now. Um, I think that this Q4 is not that much different. I'm still expecting a busy Q4 um, because I just think that people like to spend money. We live in America. Um, do you guys think that that's – I think culturally we are designed to make money. We, or not, I'm sorry, spend money. So people want to spend money. So in this situation, I just think we need to be really, really good at it. Or, I mean, you guys tell me if you agree or disagree. Is it becoming like you get all the sales or you get none of the sales? I'm watching all these different forums and – um, it's either I can't believe how many sales I'm getting or crickets, no sales whatsoever. I'm not only seeing two different kinds of seller and it's, it's kind of polarizing. And I, I'm actually thinking about leaving all the free groups that I'm in because it's like a, I can't fest. I can't do it because this, I can't do it because that I can't do it because eBay's algorithm. I can't do it because the post office. And like, I only want to be in the group of, I can like, you know what? That screwed up. I still did it anyway. So I just think that somehow 
what what is the alternative? What is the alternative to I I just I can't be in a group with I can't people. It's too hard. It's like so depressing. More questions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got another one from Donovan. Uh, does revising an item lower your item traffic? I don't think so. I think that if you revise your item and it's more accurate, I think it improves your search traffic. Um, because if, if you had a something incorrect and then you corrected it, like I was talking about earlier, the bounce rate will go down. eBay is going to show your item no matter what. It's just going to show it more often if it converts more. Does that make sense, guys? If something is converting more, eBay will recommend it more because they get more money. They don't want to recommend things that don't convert. The, I think people are confused. eBay is recommending your listing even if you don't sell it. So when you get a view and you don't get a sale, that's on you. So if you had $100 bills for $50 free shipping, if you got one view and you didn't screw it up, that person would buy it because, like, that's such a good deal. Please send me your $50 um, listings that are $100 items. Like, I, I'd be, I, would, I would love to do that, especially ones that are that liquid. Not that you think are worth 100 but, like, actually worth 100 like if I buy a hundred dollar bill for fifty dollars, I can literally go to the bank and deposit that. So not that it's worth a hundred dollars, because that's subjective. Let's see. Adam Max says, Hey Chris, because of this channel, I started this at the beginning of this month, just selling around the house and I've made a hundred dollars more. I'm in the video game market, so what do I do if I can't find items? I love it. Okay, this is a good problem to have. Um, in our group, we have a zip code location tool. So you can essentially learn how to find items in your zip code. But um, the short version of that is you need to find what's available in your area, and it might not be video games. So I would love to sell something that's not women's clothing, but since it's the most abundant in my area, people think that, like, they don't understand I'm selling used women's clothing on purpose because it's abundant in my area. So you need to learn what you can source in your area, and then that will be how you continue your journey once you sell out of everything in your house. And also, with distractions, just sell everything that you don't use. Like, I I always make the joke, sell your couch and sit on the floor. But if you don't have a couch and you don't have a TV, then all you can do is work. So um, this is interesting. All of my friends, my close friends, have moved out of California. So, like, not not by um, by choice, but like all my close friends that I had in California have left California because it's too expensive. And in doing so, it's made me really productive because I don't have a lot of people to hang out with. So, plus I had a baby, plus I got married. So, getting married, having a baby, all my friends moving away, my productivity skyrocketed because there's just a lot less distractions. So. It, it is interesting. And also, like, some of the people we hung out with over the weekend, they wanted to hang out yesterday. And we and my wife was like, uh, we're, like, she said, I'm good. I already basically got my fill yesterday. So, like, some people you don't need to hang out with that often. I don't know. Like, some, for some people, one year is good. I have plenty of one year's good friends that they didn't do much the last year. So, um, maybe the Facebook update is enough. It's nice to grab a meal together, but for those people, maybe the meal is the most important part. Like a once a year thing. Yeah, once a year. Yeah. So I have lots of once a year friends. <laughs> this is, I don't know if that's rude. I'm, and I'm, I'm not rude to them. Like they're only worth one day of my year. I'm just, I'm just like I get enough from that. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Is that rude? I don't know. No. If I haven't seen a, f- a good friend for a long time, yeah, and we get back together, it's almost like, oh, it's like I've never. Oh, been like apart you, from oh, you, oh, that's right, right. that's right, that's right. It's kind of that feeling. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, I feel that. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's. I have good friends that it's like we never took a break, and we just like I just saw him yesterday. Yeah. But I like it when people are up to something. Like, what are you up to? Same old. Okay, cool. Don't need to see you next time. <laughs> Like, I, what is the point of hanging out with you if you're doing the exact same thing? I'm planning my 10-year reunion. I went back from, or I'm sorry, 10-year, 20-year reunion. I went back and I asked my friend what he's doing. He's like, same thing as last time I talked to you. And I'm like, bro, that was a decade ago. 
I haven't talked to you in 10 years. You're doing the same thing? Consistency. Consistency. <laughs> oh, my Great. goodness. I was like, wow. So I'll see you at the 30 year. I just, I can't believe it. And also, like, um, my, the, the secretary, I was the, the class president. That's why I'm planning the reunion. The secretary was like, she wanted to do a $75 black tie um, recommended or at least business cash. And I'm like, people don't have $75. I know that sounds crazy because I'm 38, right? But people don't have $75. I know because I planned the last reunion at 10 years and people didn't have $25. Like, so I just said, if you don't have $25, just come and, and we'll figure it out. Don't not come to the reunion because you don't have $25. But like, obviously some people um, will feel bad and they don't want to come to the event. But like most people will, if they, if they really are in just a situation out of their control, they'll come and people will just take care of it. So I just think that it's a different time. People don't, I don't know. Do, do you guys have 75 extra dollars to go to an event to see people that you don't really care about? Like this reunion is going to be wild. Like, um, and also one of the, the um, historian is going to help us make name tags that have the picture of them when from high school because you can't even recognize some people. They look totally different. Mm -hmm. It's been 20 years. They look much better or much worse. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. Much better or, mu or totally different. Um, I literally, during the thing, people would say, like, I know you don't recognize me, but I'm so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that's intense. So I'm sure there's more questions on why people fail. Yeah, there's um, it's an interesting question from Deanna. I was unable to drive for six weeks or leave the house due to illness, so I shopped at Goodwill online. Do you think that has to do with dropping sales with eBay? No. I think that a drop in sales on eBay is just because people have less money. I don't, Or you don't know how to list. Your listing quality is really poor or the economy or actually both. Your listing quality is not good. And also, um, because every single day in our group, there's people hitting record highs. So it's like, it just depends on what you're selling. There's items right now that are selling better than they've ever sold before. There are items that used to sell and no longer sell. It even changes, it even changes like weekly, but I'm finding that it's way more competitive now. So like maybe there are more buyers on eBay, but there's also way more sellers. So you got to stand out. Like, it takes time to build everything. All right. Uh, from Chris Turner, will not having 24 pictures hurt me? No. Like, um, especially if you're taking 24 pictures of the tag, just to, you know, get more pictures. eBay's algorithm will know that you're cheating and those aren't real photos. I just want to remind everybody uh, in the group who's just joining right now what this, what this is about. So number one, I don't think that everything sellers, it matters. You can be an everything seller and still be successful. It's just more difficult than if you are a niche seller. You can still be successful. And 30 to 50 listings a day, everything seller is still fine. Next is, I don't think it's because you don't want it. That's a stupid comment. I get that comment every day. Oh, your followers that aren't doing well, it's because they don't want it. I don't agree with that. I think everybody wants to be successful. They just don't know how. So time management skills are very poor. That's why I think college is a good idea. A lot of people say college is a waste of time. If you go to, if you go to college and you learn how to manage your time, how to go to class, um, how to look for jobs while you're at work, uh, how to spend time socializing, how to do activities that you enjoy, you will learn time management. And coming out of time management, if you're really good at it, you can transfer that into skills plus the networking. The actual education part is not as important. It's okay, but you're going to learn more education out in the field. Next is you're not focused on learning how eBay works. That's huge. Most people have no idea. And then the last one is not consistent. And people have so many distractions during their day that there's no way they can be successful. Their phone goes off every 10 minutes, and they lose 20 minutes every single time that happens. So they lose 60 minutes. They lose 59 minutes out of 60 minutes over and over and over again. So basically over the course of 15 hours, they only do one minute of work per hour. And then you end up making $2,000 a month gross on eBay. And that doesn't, that's only like $20 a day profit after all that work that you're doing. And this, this channel, 
Like you need to at least be making $100 a day before you can start getting any kind of traction as a reseller. Let's see, Riley's asking, which is better, wholesale suppliers or physical sourcing like the bins or garage sales? I'll have more quality items sourcing myself, but I will have more inventory sourcing from suppliers. So less than 30 items a day, it's best to go out manually and get them. So I personally still source all my items. So can we look? I got all of these items on um, Sunday. I still wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go to the flea market. Do you guys think I like waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning? It sucks, right? But it doesn't suck making $2,000 before 10 a.m. on Sunday. Right? Literally, like, I, um, I source enough money and sell enough stuff on Sunday to pay for the rest of the week. It's like... Sunday, I break even. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all into my bank account. So, like, there's parts of this that suck. Somebody on the morning call said, well, what about my quality of life? What is your quality of life if you're only making $20 a day? I, I don't know. what that's, that's no quality of life. Like, I don't know. Waking up early, going early, manually finding all these items sucks. But it's just so, like, if you bulk buy... I'll show you what bulk buying is. <laughs> Let's look at this. This is bulk buying. This is me buying thousands of items. I have to sort through all of this stuff, figure out what I can't sell, what I can sell, what's, like, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. Like, trying to sort through thousands of items and figure out which ones are worth selling is much more difficult, and it's advanced. It's advanced. It's not a beginner. I wouldn't, would you tell a beginner, you should go buy 2,000 things of things that you, don't, you know nothing about. That's too hard. So individual under 30 items a day. Um, also, fun fact, um, Tech and I recorded our first podcast like in 2016. That's like six or seven years ago. At the time, because I think a lot of y'all have forgotten, in 2016, he was listing 50 items on his own with like two full-time jobs and being a dad. Okay, so like at the time... His 50-a-day listing habit, guys, let's, let's, let's try and guess. How long do you think it took him to do 50 items, shipping, photos, and listing? Everything. How long did it take him to do 50 items solo in 2016? I run the group, the Facebook group with him. This was six years ago. Now he has staff. But before, when he was doing it by himself, he went all the way up to 160 items a day by himself. But in 2016, when he was doing 50, how long did it take? Got some saying three hours, one hour, two hours or less, four hours, three hours, two okay, hours. Okay, so shipping, shipping, photos, listing, putting everything back, two hours. So everyone listening right now has two hours. I just wasted one of them, right? You guys have been listening to me now for 30 minutes. You could already be 12 listings deep. 12 listings is more than most people do, more than most people's goals, and that just happened during this video. So, um, okay, so one more thing I think is interesting. In the morning call today, somebody said that people learn differently. So um, we have the audible learners. So you listen to something, then maybe you can go do it or you remember. We have the visual learners, which they get to, they want to see it before they can do it. So I have a video called how to actually make $140 an hour listing or something. You can watch me do it live, right? But then there's also the um, watch me do it, let's do it together, and then you do it. That's the I do, we do, you do. I do, we do, you do type of learning. And that's why I think that school doesn't work the best on Zoom unless you are one of the first two kinds of learners. Right? There's kids that watch YouTube or listen to a podcast and they apply it and they're killing it right now because the pandemic essentially forced kids to be at home. So now instead of commuting to school, commuting back, lunch, recess, all that stuff, they just learn for 10, 14 hours in a row and they're crushing it. There's like 14-year-olds that um, – th there's a 15-year-old in my YouTube group that – makes $11,000 a month, and she doesn't even have a car yet. Like she's like, 
oh yeah, I just started. I'm making eleven thousand dollars a month. Is that good? She she doesn't even know yet because she's one of the learners that she can learn by listening or by watching, right? But a lot of people need the I do, we do, you do method. So um, that's what I'm going to do for reselling. I found a really cool spot in Emeryville um, at their public market, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to do, an, I think, once a month. I'm going to have a Bay Area meetup. You come here. If you're in the group, it's free. If you're not in the group, I'm thinking $100. You show up. We'll do the I do, we do, you do in person so that you can see how long this takes. Ten listings, photos and photos. Listing, putting everything away takes half an hour. Half an hour is more than 99% of people who are listening right now can do. You don't even do 10 listings in a day, and it only takes half an hour. So it's amazing. I'm, I'm literally, so I do, we do, you do. Does that make sense, guys? That's a, a, way, a lot of um, reason why people want to bring all the workforce back in-house and no more remote working. Because like in my wife's company, the people were saying, oh, can we work from, from home forever? And then the HR department said, this is not meant to be work from home work. This is meant to be collaborative work. You come in, we do it together, then you know how to do it. We can watch you. We're not interested in you doing it at home because most people are not doing it at home. So maybe the biggest issue with reselling is that you get to do it at home. I don't do it at home, so maybe that's a big advantage. Home, yeah, like the garage or yeah, I agree with that. I think if you do it in your garage or in your living room or in your kitchen, or Christine and I spent or we we made a really good video in my opinion of what it requires. The list that came out on Sunday yesterday, and it's my most unpopular video. Is that is that because you guys don't want to do the work? How come yesterday I made a video of me showing you exactly how to do it and no one watched it? Guys, tell me that please. But I make a video complaining and it gets all the views. What is the issue? Literally, it was like my worst video of the year. It's like exactly how to do it. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. Or maybe people watch it and they're like, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I just, I don't get it. Guys, please watch the video from yesterday. It's the Resar Masterclass series. It's going to come out every Sunday. It's the best I can do at teaching. I didn't even know I was trying to be a teacher until Back From Burnout told me. Because I'm like, I want to make these YouTube videos, but I don't know why. And uh, now I know why. It's because I want to share some information that I didn't know. When I started in 2017, I got all the wrong information. It took me years to figure it out. And you guys can now skip those years of pain that I have and just immediately start on the right track. So. Next question. Chai says, Chris, how do resellers compete with manufacturer sellers on eBay like Adidas that are doing 50% off brand new? Doesn't that crush shoe resellers like Isaiah? <laughs> Everything crushes shoe resellers like Isaiah because he's like so he's so easily destroyed. He's so e easily beaten. Like if we're playing floor is lava, a feather would knock him into the lava. He's so easily distracted. Um, so, okay. Adidas is not a good resale brand because every November, guys, if you guys didn't know this, every November, Adidas liquidates their inventory. So as an example, because I get these manifests, I can get brand new Adidas shoes for like $16 and I pass. Even though these shoes are like $100 as MSRP, I can't make a profit buying it for $16. It's too flooded. So I asked um, the suppliers like, why is there never Nike on these pallets? And they said, because Nike does their own liquidation. Nike sells their products at the outlet. Um, they have their own version of Nike.com where you can buy discounted goods. They don't let people control the third party selling. Only, only like above retail is really where people play in the, the, the Nike resale market. It's like where you buy the lost and founds that came out on Saturday. Hopefully you guys got those and made your $2,000, but it's like, in the the resale market of like discontinued goods for Nike, the margins are slim. Like you got to spend fifty to make ten. So I just got a manifest today, um, sixty pairs for three thousand um, from a Nike store. That's too much, guys. Would you guys pay fifty dollars to resell Nike? Even though Nike has a much stronger resale value than than Adidas, fifty dollars a pair is too steep. It's hard. 
Wax Clothing says collectibles are a hard category for sell-through. Would you recommend more commercial items? Commercial, if you're selling to businesses, hell yes, because businesses need stuff. So I would love to sell microphones, um, audio equipment, webcams. I love to sell industrial equipment, commercial equipment, cooking equipment, a house cleaning equipment, anything that people have as an occupation. Um, amazing. Gangbusters. But like... Stuff that people don't need, like collectibles that have no value, very difficult. Because like, um, the value drops so much after their condition's not pristine. It's almost like if it's not pristine, it's not perfect. It's really hard. A good example is Funko Pops. Only like 500 Funko Pops are worth buying. But can somebody look it up? How many Funko Pops are there? There's a lot. And there I think only I think only 500 are worth reselling. That's Unless you get them for like a buck. But that means like someone's desperate and they're moving across the country. 8,366 oh different designs of Funko Pops. There's got to be more than that. There's only 8,000 different Funko oh, Pops? Man. As of July. Okay, I feel like <laughs> I feel like that's light. There's so many Funko Pops. Uh, <laughs> but like only 500 of them are worth reselling. So that means there's 7,600 Funko Pops that you would pass on for $5. So that makes it really, really hard. Collectibles, you can do it. It's just more long tail. And I don't like um, being paid randomly. Like, I want to do this live every single week at the same time so you guys can stop by. Um, collectibles are hard, though, because, like, I have all these collectible shoes right here that I'm essentially, I'm selling them for so cheap because I don't want to wait. I just want to get my money back and sell more common items. And I just sell common shoes then. We're going to be selling um, these Rika sneakers today at 1 o'clock, so in a couple of hours. I would much rather sell these than Nikes because it's a common person shoe, and I can sell for $10 to $30. And I don't have to, like, in order for me to make money on these Nikes, I have to average $110. Do you guys realize how hard that is when people are living paycheck to paycheck to, to get them to spend an extra $100, $110 plus shipping plus tax, you're in at like 130 now. How many people right now have an extra 130 bucks that they want to spend on shoes? It's like pulling teeth. It's so hard. But how many people right now would spend 10 to 30 dollars for a pair of shoes they wear every day? Right? So I, I might even get a pair because that's like a good deal. And my workers, they never buy this stuff. Except for Holly. <laughs> Holly buys expensive stuff. Oh, you mean Yeah, yeah. She's like, it's expensive. I want it. So, um, but the no, the common stuff everybody needs. So I would rather sell. But then also the downside of that is you need to sell more of it. Let's see. Next question from Road Life and Fitness. Yep. I started my store again, listing five a day on Tuesday. So I've listed thirty and sold eight. Wow. Will the eBay AI system catch up if I start listing ten a day tomorrow, or should I wait longer? Um, it will, the AI will, um, it'll catch up real quick. So essentially what it will do is recognize the quality of items that you're listing. So yes, if you're listing similar items and they, they don't cannibalize each other, like as an example, um, I have, <clears throat> here, I'll give you an example. I can't, I can't, it's not here. <laughs> I, have, I have all these plus size jeans. Here, I'll give you an example. Who is that? Uh, road Life and Fitness. Okay, Road Life and Fitness. Fitness. Let's say that you're selling a, um, a pull up bar, right? And you are listing three different kinds of pull up bars every day that are really popular and they start to sell. If now you list 10, but they're similar items, sometimes your sales will, will drop off a cliff because there's too much of the same market. So that's why I recommend. Like, this is why this video is going to trigger a bunch of people because I'm kind of an everything seller, right? So people think that, um, you know, you're only, you're only selling clothing. But in clothing, there's a lot of different things. There's pants, there's jackets, there's coats, because I'm trying not to get stuck with all one thing. So I have, as you, if you guys have been watching me, you've been watching me build up inventory that's different. I've been buying shirts, T-shirts. I've been buying jeans. I've been buying jackets. I still mix in my used goods. I'm trying to figure out a nice assortment. The key to, um, you guys ready? This is, this is worth a subscribe. A subscribe and a like and a comment. You guys ready? 
the king of or the best reselling tip I can give you ever is selling assorted similar items. Right? Because like obviously I would love to sell the same thing over and over and over again, but it doesn't work that way. So assorted similar. Look at it like a index fund of all one category. So that's the best tip I can possibly give you. Assorted similar items. So for road, if you start listing twice as many items and there's still assorted items of similar quality, you'll be okay. If they're too similar, sales will slow down. Okay. Another question from Tanked Up Threads. If yep. eBay reinstated you tomorrow, would you go back? Oh man. <laughs> it's you know, part of me it was like, nah. You guys had your chance, but I, but I'm not going to be like that. I do want a store at home that's 20 listings a day. So the 140 listings would take me about, I think, seven hours a week. So 140 listings, what I'd want to do is one hour a day of eBay. And I really, really like, back to our consistency thing, I like it when every single day is the same. The only day that throws me off is Saturday because on Saturday I spend the whole day with my family. It messes up my rhythm my juju with my my business like it's almost like i think i would prefer working seven days a week for five hours so if i was going to choose what it would be like and it would be like making youtube um reselling but i only want to resell one hour a day so 20 a day would be my max if they reinstated me on ebay i would do 20 listings a day um by myself and i would do it probably Either three or four days a week, I would do 60 or something so I could take the other days off. That, that's what my initial mind is thinking. If I can't, because I don't know if I can realistically do one hour a day because on Saturdays, I really hang out with my family the whole day. So it would be hard for me to, to do it, sorry, unless I wake up early or do it before. Uh, I also have a really good sleep tip. So throw an emoji in the chat if you want me to share my sleep tip with you. I discovered it yesterday. It was the best I've slept in a long time. All right, let's do another question. From Bargain Hunter with photos, if you take a picture, then upload four and crop each one, does that count as one photo or four photos? One photo. Because eBay's algorithm will recognize that that's the same thing. It's data, right? So if you upload similar pictures, they're going to know. Like That's the same as like taking a picture this way then this way. Then this way, it's the same information, so the customer is not getting a better experience. Don't. Why do you care? That's like such a not. That's like a, people always ask, like, what? What if I do two percent promoted listings versus three percent promoted listings? There's no difference. Like, you have to. I, we did a promoted listings video, which is really good, and it's three minutes. And again, nobody watched it. So. Um, yeah, it covers all of it. Every single kind of promoter yeah. listings rates. So, and it's only, I purposely made it like three minutes because I was trying to make it digestible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got a lot of people wanting your sleep tip. Ooh, you guys ready? Okay, so I saw this meme of Buster Rhymes. You guys know Buster Rhymes, the rapper? And he's like, he raps a million miles an hour. And somebody had did done the meme, but they went over all the things that a small business owner thinks about. So like you're trying to sleep, but there's just like this f million things that you're thinking about for your business. So all I did um, last night was I thought about somebody else instantly went to sleep. <laughs> just thought about somebody else's situation and it's not, I don't have to help that person. It's just them. So that, that's how I would like to go to sleep. Just like I just am. I fall asleep. <laughs> I just exist, but it's not like that. When I'm trying to go to sleep, I'm just like all these things going through my head. Like I have all these people, like I have all these ideas, so much I, I'm leaving on the table, my death date, you know, like trying to figure out how to, right? So I just think about somebody else that's peacefully just enjoying a walk in the park, instantly put me to sleep. <laughs> that's the first time. heard that. Oh, man. Just thinking about like if your daily refinement, it's annoying. It's like every day you got to think of something to improve. That's true. Your whole business model. That's my whole business model is never enough. 
All right. Another question from Terry. Do you think listing a higher price and accept offers or list your lowest acceptable price with no offers for fastest sales? You ready? This is, this is, this is a tough one. Okay. Um, your best price right out the gate and best offer. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, a lot of people, there's a $100 item. They'll price it at $120. And they'll have best offer, hoping somebody offers 100 Or they'll price it at 100 with no best offer. I'm going to come in at $98 and accept a best offer of 20 or 30% lower. Because that's how customers want to shop. Customers don't want to see a $100 item and you've priced it at 120 Because then they're like, yo, think I'm stupid? And then they're going to offer you 40 Because they're like, you want to play this game? I'll play this game. Like and it, it doesn't doesn't work. So if if you're at a hundred and you like if you price your items reasonably, you'll get less low balls. That sounds sounds crazy, right? Price your items lower, get less low balls, but it's because you're not playing games with the customer. And if you um price your item at ninety five and the market's a hundred, you can tell people in the counter if you want to, somebody low balls you twenty dollars, you respond back. 90, you say, you know what? I'm already giving a great deal on the item. It's already below market. I can do another five. Can you meet me closer to my price? You have some, some room there. But if you're playing above the market, it doesn't work. So unfortunately, the best answer is list at your best possible price and have best offer. You can always counter or decline. But if you're asking 95 and somebody offers you 90, you're probably taking the deal. Uh, another question from Young Swerve. Just joined the group. Not sure exactly yeah. how to sort what I have. I am the guy with 2,000 items with a small amount of knowledge. Where should I be putting my focus in the group? I love it. Okay. So first thing is give us an example of one of your current listings. So your most current listing, post that in the group and let us know what you're trying to do. Like are you working on titles right now? Because you're only going to pick one of these things. You're listening. If you're the new guy to the group, this is what you focus on. Title or pictures or item description, or condition description, or preparing your items, or item description, or item specifics, or pricing, or returns, or shipping, or what kind of items, or trying to find items in my area. That's all of them. So you pick one of those things at a time, ask the group if what you're doing is good, or bad, or needs improvement, and then dad joke is the, what's the biggest room in the house, room for improvement. Everyone starts helping you move that direction. And just how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. There's a lot of information. There's literally thousands and thousands of hours of coaching. Nice. All right. Rise buys. I sell clothing, hitting 10 sales per day average. I'm at 1,100 items up, but it's becoming harder to scale. Any suggestions on making a bulk buy that would give me that boost I need to reach 3,000? Don't do it. Don't bulk buy and don't scale fast. Um, so, okay, this is really important. I made that episode one of Resar Masterclass, which is last Sunday. Yesterday was episode number two. Talks about how to safely grow. You only want to use your profit to grow. And if you do it safely, your sources will come. If you go from 1,000 to 3,000, you won't be able to maintain the quality of your listing. The titles will get worse. The photos will get a little bit sloppy. The item specifics will be a little bit incorrect. Pricing will be a little bit inaccurate. And your sales, instead of, this is really important, guys, and give me a thumbs up if this has happened to you. You might go from 1,000 to 3,000 listings and have all that extra space, all that extra time, and your sales could be the same or worse. You're expecting to triple up on sales, right? You had a 1,000 item store, you went to a 3,000 item store, but the opposite happened. Your sales slowed because... We talked about this earlier in this episode, the bounce rate increased. If your bounce, bounce rate increases, eBay is going to treat your entire store poorly, badly. Like, this is how you treat us. This is how we'll treat your whole store. You put this garbage on our site, we're going to give you garbage traffic. So garbage in, garbage out. So don't do it. Don't book buy. Go back to that episode and watch. If you're listing 10 a day, Figure out how to use the profits from that, the list 11, the list 12, and your sources will automatically come. If you try to skip a step, you'll be slapped. Like, it's happened. I, I, I want to make this slapping video, and it's going to be Connor slapping me every time I have an idea. All oh, the ideas that people video. have. I want to start buying bulk. 
I, I, I want a cross list. All of them. Don't do any of these things. I did all of them, and they suck. I cannot wait for that video. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Martin Miranda, new to your channel, how do I research clothing brands? And is 10 listings a day a good start? One listing a day is a good start. So I don't recommend going to two listings a day until you're selling one a day. So in the beginning of Resar Nirvana, the, the path that I recommend is list one item, sell one item. List two items, sell two items. List three items, sell three items. Then when you get to the point where you sell all the items because you're only buying things that sell, then start listing one a day until you're selling one a day, which happens, let's say between 50 and 100 listings, you sell one a day. At that point, list two and never, never surpass half of what your listing goal is and you'll never get in trouble. So if you list two and sell one, you can comfortably list three. So don't go to four until you're comfortably listing two. And the best way to research brands is to either um, look at that video that we have in our group going over how to find stuff locally in your zip code or you can watch our brand masterclass, which we did maybe two weeks ago. And in that video, I go over what I buy on um, Sundays. So um, I'll show you again. Every Sunday, I go and buy stuff from the flea market. I put it on the racks. This stuff we're actually going to sell Tuesday. So tomorrow afternoon, we're going to sell this stuff. And I'll go over all the brands that I buy, like Nike, Pendleton, L.L. Bean. And most of the items that I buy are available at the mall. So if you go to the mall, those brands spend millions and millions of dollars on marketing. I'm looking for what's trendy. So of course, you could waste your money buying a bolo list from something, but I always recommend you do this as a clothing seller. You guys ready? Please smash a like button. Please give me an eggplant emoji in the chat because I'm about to drop some crazy knowledge. You ready? Go to Walmart, go to Target, go to Kohl's, and browse the whole store in the clothing section to find out what brands not to buy. Because if you if you look at the list, right? Because that's where most of the clothing is. Most of the clothing is Kohl's, Walmart, Target, right? So you need to look at what's on trend. This is the confusing part. All the stuff at Target is on trend, but you don't buy it, right? It looks nice, it's stylish, it's on trend, but doesn't resell well. They already took the price out of it by copying somebody and making it $19.99 at Target. You can, of course, read it online, but it's not the same as going. When you go to REI and you look through all the brands and figure out what to sell, you start to figure out, okay, Smart Wool is more valuable because it's different. Arc'teryx is more valuable because it's different. Maybe wear the clothing to get an idea of why it's worth so much money. Why does Lululemon cost more? Why does it resell better? What styles are better? Some Lululemon you don't pick up. I have found that even though the leggings are, are the jam, the tanks still sell better for me. So just got to get in there and learn, but it's really important to figure out what sells well for you, and it's a moving target. From there she goes thrifting. Hi, Chris. I watch your vids every day, and love I end up reselling and thrifting a lot. Thank you for the inspiration. With so much love from the Philippines. Ooh. Just some love. I love it. <laughs> uh, and then another question from Albert Torres. Hi, Chris. New in the channel. Quick question. Yep. What license or permits are required for resale on eBay? None. So you don't need anything. You're by default a sole proprietorship. So everyone in America is a business by default. So as an example, I pay some of my workers 1099, right? They don't actually need to open a business. They just need to pay taxes on the amount of money that I give them. That's how eBay works. eBay issues you a 1099. So does PayPal. So does Venmo. If you, so like you can't get around it by selling stuff to your friends on Venmo. Venmo will now report you especially if you make over $600. So that means you are an independent contractor and you don't need a special license for that. If you get a resale license, that means that you can buy things tax-free. So if you guys are buying from me on whatnot and don't know that you can file for tax-free on whatnot, you can, and then you don't need to pay sales tax because you are buying with, with the intent to resell and collecting sales tax when you sell to the final customer. So you might need a license in your area to do business you might need different zoning permit depending on where you are. Like if you're running, people don't really want to see tractor trailers in their neighborhood dropping off stuff or commercial trucks. And a loading dock is going to require maybe something different. Like if you're getting a commercial property. But if you're just doing this at home, you're doing it in a storage unit, you don't need any permits beyond I recommend a resale license. And don't pay anybody for that. It should be free.
Let's see, Young Swerve's asking about the group. Just joined, took the monthly subscription. Hello. What do I do next? Okay. This is the order. Um, you should listen to Tech and Sports' calls in reverse order. So the sheet um, is, is on Patreon.com. You can find the sheet of all the different benefits. But listen to his calls first because, in my opinion, he's the best reseller ever. So go to his calls in reverse order. If you have any questions, go on Tuesday night. He will answer questions all night. So get every single question you've ever had about reselling and then ask him on Tuesday night. Um, I think he does at least $5 million in sales. It might be higher now, but 1,000 orders per day. So ask him. After that, my calls are Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock in the morning. You can ask me live. After my call in the morning is the beginner call from 7 a.m. to 7.30. Although, if you are a beginner, I would still just ask me or tech. You can ask Isaiah too. Isaiah is our beginner call coach, and he's great. He's less intimidating, but anybody in the group and all the coaches will answer any of your questions. So then go back category specific. You can look at the media calls, the toy calls, women's clothing, men's clothing, men's shoes. We're working on collectibles a little bit. We just added a car parts call, jewelry, um, video games, and Amazon. So we're going to start adding everything to it, but we already have 14 calls right now. Also have category-specific calls for the UK and also for Australia. We are looking for somebody who knows a lot about Canada. Other than Canada Post sucks, we know that. But like outside of that, what are the ins and outs of selling on Canada in Canada, eBay.ca? We're looking for a coach there. So if you have some insights, um, maybe we can grab a, a Canadian call, which would be fun. Internationally, um, we also have lots of people in the group from Germany, so I, I wouldn't be opposed to doing an eBay German call. Also, Berlin's one of my favorite cities. So, we have an accounting call on Thursdays with Cheryl, and we have a uh, I want to say backlog, but that's the wrong word. We have a bunch of like a bank of calls for photography help. So, if you want to figure out your lighting. Mark Rosales did like a series of photo calls to help you organize your lighting. Yeah, cool. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything. It's, it's a lot of information, so don't hesitate to, to ask in the Facebook group or uh, email me or DM me. It might just take a little bit longer to respond. Okay. Uh, Chris Carter is asking, can you succeed on eBay if you do not list every day? Yes. And I, we don't even recommend listing every day. We recommend however many days you want to take off, just scheduling ahead. You cannot be successful on eBay if you don't list at least seven items a week. So if you don't list one item a day, you can't sell one item a day, and I'm sorry, that doesn't work. you got to list at least one item a day, but you only need to work... You only need to work one out of every 21 days because you can schedule ahead three weeks on eBay. So if you really... Um, I guess what you could do if you really wanted to is you could do... Um, one day of work, uh, not one day, two days of work per month of listing. If you really hate listing that much, two times a month. So every other Sunday, you list all your items for the month. And the rest of the days, you just ship and do customer service. That's not so bad. Because usually, I don't see any problems with, does anybody in the chat have issues with shipping or answering questions? It's mainly, they don't like listing. So maybe twice a month, we do it here. I, I do, we do, you do together. You, everyone drives here, and we all list together twice a month, and then that's it. But we, we did an explanation why, why you should list every day, but you don't have to. Uh, Jay Cop. Chris, I've had a lingering question about promoter listings. Hit if me. I promote listings at a higher rate, would that allow them to show up more on Google search at all or only eBay? So eBay pushes its um, – eBay, I think, spends a million dollars a day or a million dollars a week on AdSense. So essentially, you type in um, Rika sneakers into Google, right? And if you look – right when you type it in, um, you can either go to shopping, which is what – do you guys do shopping? When you search on Google? Guys, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, do you yeah. guys, so those of you listening, do you guys click on the shopping tab or you just type it in the google.com? I use, I type it in the google.com and then I click shopping. Yeah. Do, how do you guys do it? do it? Yeah, sometimes to see it, but I typically go to a website sometimes, just the first listings I see. 
Okay. So, but it seems like everybody uses Google.com first. Then they either click on the website, like Connor, to investigate, or they go to the t shopping tab. So that listing right there is not affected by your promotional rate. Um, it's, eBay is going to recommend what they think will convert. Does that make sense, guys? You can promote it 100%, but be selling a bag of garbage. They will not send that to Google. They'll keep it to themselves. They'll charge you, and they'll hide it on their own website too. But if you have a really good deal, it's worth it to, for eBay to pay the money to Google to advertise that. Does that make sense, guys? Because they want that to convert. Because once that customer is on eBay, they're shopping on eBay. So hopefully that makes sense. The promoter listings rate doesn't affect how good your listing is, and eBay only wants the best customers on their site. Joy has a quick question. Hey, yep. Chris, I'm on a member of the group, but somehow I've missed what happened to the group of 10 that you were mentoring. How are they doing? Most of them are in the group. I'd say eight out of 10 are doing really well. Off the top of my head, Hannah is killing it. She has, um, I think, a 500 item store, and she sells eight to 10 a day. Um, London's killing it. And Chad just reached out to me for a. Um, a wholesale connect because he wanted to buy from the same supplier as me for vintage clothing, which I think is fine. And then Brittany, Brittany is, she's like a secret Hawaii lady. So she, um, I don't know what happened in her life, but she had this awesome vacation coming up. So when she was in the mentorship group, she actually said, can I get all the information in the next day or two so I can go on my vacation? So she did. She got like all the info went on her awesome vacation, came back, and she's killing it. And I also see her on uh, Whatnot. So she's doing Whatnot, eBay, and Poshmark. Um, and I think she's slowly fading out Poshmark. And I also watched Poshmark live for the first time yesterday. It's the same as Whatnot. Is that all right? It's good. It's the same. It's good. So let's do two more questions, guys. All right. We got one from Joseph. Would you recommend creating new listings from scratch or to sell similar from sold comps? I'm sorry? Would you recommend creating new listings from scratch or to sell similar from sold comps? Always from scratch. Um, once you build one listing from scratch, you'll understand how eBay works, and then you can sell similar from your own listing. You can use the sold listings as a guide, but you should start from scratch so you understand how the sausage is made. Does that make sense, guys? Just, a, just at least the first 100 items, make your own sausage. Figure out salt, pepper, what ratio of fat to protein you want, what kind of casing you want, instead of just buying a sausage and cutting it open, which is okay, but it's better if you just build the sausage from ground up. Last question. Let's see. Looking for a good question. I guess this one. Sure. Okay. All right, last question from Jeanette Randall. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Why is eBay asking us to support changing the six hundred dollar ten ninety nine requirement? Seems like they want tax evasion. Wait, who? Uh, why is eBay asking us to support changing the six hundred dollar ten ninety nine requirement? Seems like they want tax evasion. <laughs> no, they don't want tax evasion. They just know that most people are scared of it, and um, they shouldn't be scared of it because you want to pay tax. You guys want roads and schools, right? Like, I don't, paying tax is good. Like, I understand you want to pay as little as possible, but like, okay, some people, like, like somebody that's related to me, it may not be my brother, um, <laughs> he's afraid of the $600 tax limitation. He's, and I'm like, why? Why don't you just sell lots of stuff and pay tax? He's like, what's the best way for me to sell $599 worth of stuff? You still owe tax. You just don't have to report it. Why? So, like, instead of selling thousands of dollars worth of stuff and paying some tax, he'd rather sell $599 and not report the tax that he's supposed to be paying. It scares so many people. That's why eBay is trying to get a change because the, I think the average person spends 13 hours a year on their taxes. Guys. 13 hours is half a day. That's a lot, but it's also half a day. Like, do you want to make money 364 days and then one day spend half your day figuring out the taxes or make money one day in 364 days don't make money? I just don't get it. I, I, I think you should pay as much tax as you humanly can. Um, I have no issue with that. 
the good thing about America is that they allow you to um they allow you to reinvest profits into the future. So that's really useful as a reseller. You can buy stuff that you're going to sell next year, this year, and defer the tax. Um, that's not tax evasion. That's business 101. So appreciate you guys. We're going to call it. Please join the Patreon group, patreon.com slash podcast, and we'll talk to you guys later.